All right, welcome everybody. What I'd like to do in this live stream is cover uh, trigonometry with right angles. So what we're going to work on is evaluating the six trigonometric functions when given a triangle. Uh, we'll work on evaluating the six trigonometric functions when given a trigonometric equation. And then we'll work on evaluating uh, certain trigonometric functions when given a um, angles from special right triangles. And then just like my other streams, if you guys have joined before, um, what I'll do is I'll kind of just kind of take a break, answer any kind of questions that you guys have, and then we'll get into some multiple choice questions that kind of cover the um, same kind of topic. Looks like we only have three multiple choice here. So that is how we're going to run. And again, this is just a homework assignment that I provided for my students. So I'm just going to kind of run through those answers um, for you. And if this is something that you're interested in, we are at the beginning of our trigonometry unit. And so we will be doing trig for a while now, uh, probably for um, up until like at least January timeframe. So we're going to be doing trig for a while. Um, so hopefully whatever class you're taking, if you're taking some trig, we'll be covering a lot of different topics here. Say, uh, hi, Ophel, how are you? I'm not intrigued, but interested. Well, here we go. Um, and, and the first one you can, you know, a lot of this is going to be very similar to those of you that at least have a basic understanding of our trigonometric functions. Um, you can probably, you know, definitely follow along for these first, actually, really for everything we're doing um, in this. And because in geometry, you know, we really just kind of touch the idea of our trigonometric functions. We really just kind of use them to find missing sides or missing angles of a triangle. But we don't really get into the, the depth of really what these trigonometric functions mean and represent. And that's kind of where, um, that's kind of the direction I like to take for this first chapter is really truly understanding our trigonometric functions, what they mean, what they represent. So. The first thing we notice here is, you know, for this triangle, we have a right triangle. And just like for the Pythagorean theorem, we can only apply our trigonometric functions when we have a right angle. And the first thing that we'll want to do, though, is make sure we have all the sides. Because when we're dealing with the trigonometric functions, we're basically looking at comparisons. We're comparing side lengths to one another, um, between each other. So first thing I notice here is I do not have the hypotenuse of this equation. So what I'm going to do is, actually, I'm going to... Throw this off. Can I not do that? Throw that off. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, apply the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. So just remember Pythagorean theorem, a lot of people have it memorized as a squared equals b squared equals c squared. You know, I think of it as that's fine, but also leg squared plus leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared. Okay, so we can obviously know that the two legs of the right triangle are what make up our 90 degree angle, and then our hypotenuse is obviously our missing term here, which you know we could use a, you know, B and C if we like to. Um, and that is going to be our always directly across from our 90 degree angle. So our two legs here are two and four. So I'll write that as two squared plus four squared equals some missing variable. In this case, I'll just use C c squared. So 2 squared is 4 plus 4 squared is 16 is equal to c squared and therefore we're left with 20 equals c squared. Okay now to I obviously solve for c we're now going to have to introduce the square root and at right now for finding the length of the hypotenuse it's always going to be positive we don't need to worry about it being negative. Um, however, there are going to be problems later on where that idea and understanding of using plus or minus is going to become very important. So just remember, introducing the square root, we do always want to include plus or minus. Since we're finding the measure of the hypotenuse, having a negative hypotenuse does not really make sense. So we're going to stick with C being the positive value of the square root of 20. However, I recognize I can simplify that, right? And we always want to use our answers in simplified form. So I can break this up. Since I can't take the square root of 20, though, I can rewrite that as the square root of 4 times 5, which I can now take the square root of 4. I still can't take the square root of 5, so therefore I can rewrite this as 2 radical 5. So that's what I'm going to write up here, 2 square root of 5. Now, to get to our six trigonometric functions, even though we've kind of covered this in the class um, for our notes, I will write them out all here just for those of you that are maybe kind of forgot them or don't want to, you know, kind of look them up. So um, just remember the sine of a given angle theta. And again, this is very important that we're understanding this is always the sine of an angle. So in this case, I'm just going to use theta, even though both these equations I used x. 
theta is sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. And again, basically what that's saying is the sine of an angle is basically equal to the comparison of how, lo how long is the opposite side of the triangle compared to the hypotenuse based on that angle theta. Um, so the cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The tangent of the angle theta, hmm, let's put that up top. The tangent of theta is the comparison of the opposite side over the adjacent. And then, then let's go into the reciprocal functions. So the reciprocal functions, so cosecant is a reciprocal of sine. So basically it's just going to be equal to the comparison of how big is the hypotenuse over the opposite. Then we have secant, which is the reciprocal of uh, the cosine function, which is the comparison of hypotenuse over adjacent. And then last but not least, we have the cotangent function, which is the reciprocal of tangent. I don't know why I put a comma there which is equal to um, adjacent over opposite. And again, these over, when I'm saying over, and remember it's a comparison. We are comparing the measure of one side length to another side length. So when we're evaluating this case, now we could have like theta over you know, here, but in this case we only have x. So what I'm doing is I'm going to evaluate the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent of, our angle, of, of the angle x, because that's the angle that we are given. Um, and then, again, it just make sure if you're given another angle, make sure you know what you're finding the sign of. Um, based on, we need to understand which is our opposite and our adjacent sides. So what we talked about in class was the hypotenuse is always directly across, right? So directly across of the 90 degree angle. That one's usually easy. But the right triangle, you have two legs, right? And so what we need to do is we need to be able to differentiate these legs. And the way that we differentiate, at least the way that I like to differentiate them, is the adjacent side is the side that is always between the right angle and your angle that you're referring to. So if here's our angle x, well, you can see that this side length is right next to our angle x and obviously our 90 degree angle. Whereas this angle is like directly across, it's like opposite of the angle. And that's why this side length is referred to as the opposite side. Now again, just again, a little side note, just be careful because if I was using, let's say y over here, now this would be my adjacent side and this would be my opposite side. So just be careful with that. Just make sure you know which angle you're referring to and you're finding your trigonometric functions for. In this case, we're gonna do everything with x, so we're gonna stick with the red. But if the problem was talking about the angle y, you would need to make sure that you knew you know, what the sign. The hypotenuse doesn't change, but the opposite and the adjacents do relative to the angle. All right, let's get into it. So the cosine of this angle is basically going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. And one of the things we talked about, I didn't write this in here, but um, one thing I did ask my students was to simplify. And so we're gonna practice simplifying by rationalizing uh, the radical in the denominator, as well as simplifying any fractions. So I'll say the sine of x, because that is our angle that we're referring to, is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so you guys can see in this case that my twos will divide to one, and then I can multiply by the square root of five on the square root of five. And what that does is that gets rid of my radical in the denominator because then I'm just left with a square root of five in the numerator and square root of five times square root of five is the square root of 25, which is just five. The cosine of x is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So four over two radical five, and we're gonna be doing this a lot that you're gonna kinda of notice. You can start doing this rationalizing without actually always showing your work. Now, two and four don't divide out, but now four divides into, or two divides into four, two times, so now I'm gonna be left with a two up top, and then again I have to rationalize this denominator. So now I'm left with, let's do it again in red, two radical five over five, okay? Uh, to do the tangent, tangent of x is basically equal to, again, the opposite over the adjacent. And again, I wrote everything, um, oops, come on, there you go. I have everything written up there, again, for follow. So actually, I'll keep these up there so you guys can follow. The tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. So here's opposite over adjacent. So that's just gonna be two over four 
which we can just reduce to one half. And now let's do the reciprocal functions. Now we could go back to the reciprocal functions and, and apply this, right? Which is fine. Um, or what we could a little bit kind of trick is we can just really just take our original answer that we had here and just reciprocate it, right? So rather than taking, you know, opposite over hypotenuse, I can just take hypotenuse over opposite. I know the twos are going to divide out. Actually, I'll just, I'll simplify this first one. Then I'll do, start doing some tricks. So cosecant of X in this case is going to be two radical five over two, which we know to simplifies to radical five. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So I can see how I can got everything big, but therefore that's just going to be reciprocal of two radical five over four. So two radical five over four. Now two over four is going to reduce to one half. So that's going to be radical five over two. And then last but not least is we have cotangent, which is just the reciprocal of two over four. So that's going to be four over two which just equals two, okay? Um, so that's basically the process that we're gonna follow for the next triangle. Um, you can see this triangle is oriented a little bit differently, but again, it doesn't matter. Identify the hypotenuse, which is always directly across, right? And then again, we could also label the adjacent and the um, opposite side. So we can say that this, since this side length is between our angle X and our 90 degree, this is my adjacent and this is my opposite. Now, we notice we don't have the opposite side, so what we're gonna need to do in this case is, again, use Pythagorean theorem to find the opposite. Now, I like my leg-leg squared thing, but I will use the A, B, and C for the Pythagorean theorem here. So by using A squared plus B squared equals C squared, just make sure you're using A and B to represent the legs, right? And C is always represented by your hypotenuse. So therefore, I'd have one squared plus b squared equals three squared. And therefore, that's one plus b squared is equal to nine. Subtract one, subtract one. b squared is equal to eight. And again, we now need to introduce the square root. Since there is no like orientation as far as positive negatives here, again, we're just gonna be talking about the positive value of the triangle or of that side length. So therefore, um, B is going to equal the square root of eight, which again can be re-represented, or square root of eight, which we can simplify as the square root of four times two, and we can take the square root of four, so therefore we can say B is equal to two radical two, okay? Um, all right, so now we got that, so let's go ahead and put that over, let's put that in black. So this is two radical two. All right, so now again, we're just gonna do the um, sine, cosine, and tangent. And again, we're gonna do it from this angle, right? And again, just remember, if we had another angle here, y, now this would be the adjacent side and this would be the opposite side. But again, we're dealing with x, so we're gonna deal with the blue, not the green. Um, so let's do sine of x. So the sine of x is going to be the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's gonna be two radical two over three. Nothing I can do here, that's pretty good, right? Uh, I like those. Cosine of x is equal to the adjacent over hypotenuse. And then we have the tangent of x, which is opposite over adjacent. So that's gonna be two radical two over one. And obviously we could just simplify that to two radical two. And now let's go and do the reciprocal functions. So if I was gonna do the cosecant of x, oops. So the cosecant of x is again the reciprocal of this. So as I reciprocate this as reciprocal of sine, that's gonna be giving me two radical two. And you notice that I need to obviously rationalize the denominator here. So I'm gonna multiply by the square root of two on the top and bottom. And then what I'll get is three radical two over square root of two times square root of two is square root of four, square root of four is two, two times two is four. All right, the rest of them work out fairly well, not too much work to do. Um, the reciprocal of cosine is three over one which is just three, and then the reciprocal of tangent 
um, is again the reciprocal or a cotangent here is going to be 1 over 2 radical 2. So I'll have to rationalize the denominator here. And when doing that, I get square root of 2 over, again, this ends up being the same as that one, so it's square root of 2 over 4. Okay, so there we go. Um, that's what we do when we find when we have a triangle. Find the missing side length, and um, therefore go ahead and write our trigonometric relationships. And again, it's all based on our angle. In these two examples, um, we don't have a triangle, and all we have is sine of theta equals square root of three over three. And so, what we need to do in this case is really kind of understand what exactly are we given. So remember, the sine of an angle, any angle, theta, x, y, whatever, is the comparison of the length of the opposite side compared to the hypotenuse. So what this angle is saying is sine of some angle theta in some triangle where we don't know where it is, but whatever of some triangle, the length of the opposite side is square root of 3, and the length of the hypotenuse is 3. So this is kind of interesting because we now know this tells us what the opposite side is, as well as what the hypotenuse is. So we know we have an angle, and we now know the length of the opposite side as well as the hypotenuse. Well, guess what? That's enough information for us to draw a triangle and figure out um, what all the side lengths are. So let's just draw a random triangle. Let's keep it simple. Has to be a right triangle. We'll say here's going to be theta. Right? The opposite side, which would be over here, is square root of 3, and the hypotenuse is 3. Okay. Now, to make my math a little bit easier, I'm just going to kind of work this into um, my hypotenuse squared, which is 9, is equal to the square root of 3 squared. Um, well, I'll just write it in there. Square root of 3. Well, yeah, squared. Here, let me actually... So this would be 3 squared, and then let's say plus, I don't know, a squared. Okay, so when you subtract this, you get 9 is equal to 3 plus a squared. And then you'd have 6 is equal to a squared. So therefore, again, no positive or negative here, so a is equal to the square root of 6. All right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, yeah, I'll just put it in there. So a is going to be the square root of 6. All right. So again, just make sure we know our, we don't want to like mix these up. This is my hypotenuse. This is my opposite side of theta, right? And this is my adjacent. So it doesn't matter where you place your theta as long as you make sure you put the opposite side and the adjacent side correctly, right? You could have done theta up here, but then you would have had put square root down 3 down here and square root of 6 over here, but the hypotenuse always remains the same. All right, so let's go ahead and do rather quickly our six trigonometric functions. So the sine of theta. Now again, notice I'm using the sine of theta, whereas previously I was using x because that is we're referring to a given angle. It's very important to understand that the trigonometric functions are based on the angle, um, just like the square root is based on what you're taking the square root of. So the sine of theta is, we're already given that. So I'm just going to write that answer. The cosine of theta, well now we have the adjacent side, which is square root of 6 over hypotenuse. So that's going to be the square root of 6 over 3. And then the tangent of theta is equal to the square root of 3 over the square root of 6. Now this one's kind of interesting because using our rules of radicals, we can simplify this to the square root of 3 over 6. And the square root of 3 over 6 can be reduced to the square root of 1 half, which now we can break that back up into a radical over a radical, which now we can simplify to 1 over the square root of 2, and then rationalize your denominator. And again, you don't need to show all this work. I am just showing this work so you guys can see how I arrived at this solution. And then you're finally left with the square root of 2 over 2. Ah, square root of 2 over 2, yeah. So therefore, this can be simplified to the square root of 2 over 2. So I just kind of showed my work, my steps. Using those rules of radicals really much help, really helped. Um, all right. Da, da, da.
inverse, or it's not inverse. No, don't say inverse. Reciprocal functions. Uh, so a cosecant of theta is equal to 3 over radical 3. Are you guys okay if I uh, mm, don't always show radicalizing the denominator? I think since I showed it in two other examples before, I think I'm going to be or many, many examples before, I am just going to simplify this to 3 radical 3 over 3, which is just going to equal the square root of 3. So again, those 3s will divide out. What I did is from there to there, I rationalized the denominator. Um, so just make sure you guys understand that. In this case, for secant, you know, I showed my work here before, so I'm just going to kind of simplify that. Um, square root of 6, multiply by the square root of 6 on the top and the bottom, and you get 3 square root of 6 over 6, which reduces down to square root of 6 over 2. So again, I'm just trying to save myself some time. Um, for this one, for the cotangent, you could take the reciprocal of 2 over square root of 2, or you could simply just take the square root or the reciprocal of square root of 6 over the square root of 3, which using our rules of radicals, we could just rewrite as a square root of 6 divided by 3, which is just equal to the square root of 2. Okay, So just kind of using some of those um, forms. Again, that is a, what did I do? That's a, that's a 6 on the denominator. That's a horrible 6. Oh, that's one half. That's supposed to be a two. There you go. Um, all right, so let's get into cotangent. Now, again, for cotangent, we got to understand what cotangent represents. And again, cotangent of any angle or any angle is represented to the comparison of the length of the adjacent side to the opposite side. And again, we don't have a triangle to compare. So let's create a triangle. Let's make it simple. It's going to be a right triangle. Let's put theta right here. Right. Use the same triangle. We know that cotangent is opposite. Uh, let's move this over a little bit so we have some more space. Okay. Again, this cotangent is the comparison of the opposite side over the adjacent side. Okay. So if we look at this, we could say, well, I know that this is my opposite side and this is my adjacent side. And this is my hypotenuse. So here we have opposite, which is 5, the adjacent, which is 12. And what's nice about this problem is I noticed that this is a Pythagorean triple, right? So Pythagorean triples, you know, the most common that we're going to deal with is 3, 4, 5, as well as 5, 12, 13. And if you're not sure of this being a Pythagorean triple, then do the Pythagorean theorem, like 12 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared. And what you get is 144 plus 25 is equal to c squared. And what you'll see here is that's 169 is equal to c squared. c is equal to 13. So Pythagorean triples are nice because all the side lengths of our triangle are integers. So this is going to make our math a lot easier. We're not going to have to rationalize the denominator. We're not going to be simplifying fractions. We love Pythagorean triples. So always be on the lookout for either a 3, 4, 5 triangle, a 5, 12, 13 triangle. Those are at least the most common that are going to be shown. There are a lot more Pythagorean triples. You can obviously take those two Pythagorean triples and double them. Um, you know, for instance, a 6, 8, 10 is another Pythagorean triple. But um, since we don't get into with, since I mostly use non-calculator uh, for this test, I don't really go much higher um, than that. So let's go ahead and knock this one out so we can get to our special right triangles. And then we'll go ahead and take a break. So if you guys have any questions, um, I'll try to answer them. I do need to kind of leave here in 15 minutes. So hopefully I can get this homework wrapped up. Um, so the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. The tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. The cosecant of theta is hypotenuse over opposite or just the reciprocal of sine, 12 over 5. The secant of theta is hypotenuse over adjacent or the reciprocal of cosine. And the cotangent of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse or the reciprocal of tangent. 
Okay. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you basically are going to evaluate the six trigonometric functions when given a trigonometric equation. Basically, what you're going to want to do is identify what information you're given, draw a triangle, use a Pythagorean theorem to find the missing um, length of a side, and then evaluate your trick six trigonometric functions. Now, before I go ahead and wrap this up, one thing I do want to talk about is how to evaluate the sine cosine tangent. Um, of our six trigonometric functions. So the way that we came about with these, um, if you, for my students in class, is we looked at the 30, 60, 90 triangles. And what we recognized was that it didn't matter what type of triangle that we dealt with for a 30, 60, 90. So if we took, um, here, let's do, so we kind of worked on two different triangles. Let's do a 45. So that's a 45, 45, 90. And this is a 45, 45, 90. Okay. Um, and what we determined from our understanding from geometry class was that a 45, 45, 90 triangle has legs that are the same. And by applying Pythagorean theorem, the hypotenuse is multiplied by the square root of 2. Then what we did is we worked on different side lengths. Like you could do any number. You could pick like 2 you know, two, then this would be two, radical two. But what we noticed is if we kept on simplifying, the easiest trigonometric function for us to work with was when the hypotenuse was one. And therefore what we'd get is radical two over two and radical two over two. The same thing worked for the 30, 60, 90 triangles. What we did is we remembered from geometry class the relationships of the 30, 60, 90. I'm just going to show the 30 degree angle, that the short leg was x, the hypotenuse was 2x, and the long leg was going to be x squared of 3. So what we did is like we just kind of worked, we practiced on how to find these missing measures and evaluate the trigonometric functions. We gave like, you know, this answer would be like 5, and then this would be 10, and then this would be, you know, 5 squared of 3. But what we noticed was the easiest triangle for us to be able to evaluate the six trigonometric functions was when the hypotenuse was 1, the short leg was 1 half, and this would have been uh, square, root of square root of 3 times 2. Okay, and again, I'll show, I'll, I'll work with this on a couple times. It doesn't matter which triangle you use. If you're talking about the 45, 45, 90 triangles, or if you're talking about 30, 60, 90 triangles, it doesn't matter what the side lengths are. You, all these answers are all going to be the same. All right, and I'll prove it with many different examples. So let's talk about the sine of 60 degrees. Um, so 60 degrees is right here, okay? And remember, 60 degrees is opposite over hypotenuse. So when I want to write in the sine of 60 degrees, let's use this triangle. The opposite side is going to be here. So here's my 60 degrees. I guess I should write in 60 degrees. So opposite over hypotenuse. So that's going to be x square root of 3 over 2x. Well, that just simplifies to square root of 3 over 2. Okay? Why don't we do this one with 60 degrees? So this one is sine of 60 degrees is equal to square root of 3 over 2 over 1. Well, obviously, that's square root of 3 over 2, right? And that's why we liked using this triangle more than this triangle or a triangle that has any other side lengths. You know, for instance, like um, secant of 45. I'll pick another triangle. I'll do one that is, let's say, with, um, let's pretend this one is a 45, 45, 90. Let's pick this to be 5, 5. And then this would be 5 square root of 2. Okay, so remember, secant is going to be, now, again, it doesn't matter which triangle we're picking or which angle because these are both 45 degrees, right? So you really just need to, like, pick one. It doesn't really matter. They're both 45 degrees. But let's pick this one. The secant of 45 degrees is going to be equal to hypotenuse over adjacent. So that's x square root of 2 over x, which is just equal to the square root of 2. The secant of 45 degrees of this triangle is going to be 5 square root of 2 over 5, which is just equal to the square root of 2. And let's do this one more time. Secant of 45 degrees of this triangle, right, here's your 45 degrees, 
is 1 over square root of 2 over 2. Now this one is not that much fun. But if I multiply by the reciprocal on the top and the bottom, then I would get 2 over radical 2, 2 over radical 2, and I'm left with, again, um, then I rationalize the denominator, and guess what? You're going to be left with the square root of 2. So even though this is the preferred you know, triangle there, actually looking at another triangle will actually probably make this one easier. So I guess maybe I should uh, eat my lunch on that one because uh, this one wasn't the easiest to work on. But anytime dealing with non-reciprocal properties, I would say this one is the easiest because you're always taking whatever side length over 1. And again, let's look at tangent of 45 degrees. Here's your 45 degree triangle. Opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent, opposite over adjacent. Every single time that we're taking the tangent of 45 degrees, the opposite over adjacent they are the same values, right? Because the legs are the same. So the tangent of 45 degrees is just going to equal 1. The cosecant of 30 degrees. Well, remember, that's the reciprocal of the, ah, not the secant. That's the reciprocal of sine of 30 degrees. So why don't we find the sine of 30 degrees? The sine of 30 degrees is... Here's 30 degrees. Opposite over hypotenuse. So if I know that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to 1 half, then I know that the reciprocal of 30 degrees is just going to equal the reciprocal of that, which is 2. And then let's do, this, do the cosine of 30 degrees. Again, adjacent over hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse. It doesn't matter. Just take the adjacent over 1. I like that the cosine of 30 degrees is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. So you can see we can do it long way. You can work it out with special right triangles. But once you start to get used to them, once you start knowing these triangles very well, you can see that we can start doing this very quickly. Okay. So I'm just going to take a quick little break. Um, I don't have much time, but I will do want to check in and see some of you guys that uh, have joined in for this stream. So. Hey, Cooler, hey, Steeler, Dan, first grade math. Honestly, I do not teach first grade math. I have not taught it in a while. Hey, Dow, hey, Al Gore, hey, Harris. I use Sokotoa. Sokotoa is a great way to understand it. Nothing wrong with Sokotoa. Um, you know, I teach Sokotoa too, like it was on my notes um, for my students, for them to remember it. So, you know, it's perfectly a good way to remember because a lot of students don't remember this, right? It takes some time. And I would use Sokotoa when I was a student. Um, and I think that's perfectly fine for, you know, as you trying to understand them. Uh, the Kitty Gamer, Minecraft, whatever. Whenever I get confused, I can always remember Chusa Cow. Hmm. Chusa. Interesting. Never, oh, my God. That's actually smarter. So um, can you do a video on rearranging? Ace Inferno, I'm not sure what you're talking about, but if you can let me know. I, I will tell you I don't have time today to do on rearranging, um, and I'm not sure what you're talking about. But if um, – I, I do plan on going live tomorrow as well because I have to do the other homework on uh, angles in trigonometry. So if you want to join on that. Uh, Kusu, I did do secant and cosecant, so hopefully that helped. But I will be going live tomorrow. I just don't know what time because my day is always kind of crazy. So cotangent functions. Be sure to hit that like button. That's right, Kitty Game. Hit that like button. Uh, hopefully I can help you guys out and um, you know get you get you guys in with your help. So all right. Well, let's, um, hey, a freaking taco. <laughs> uh, make sure you reach out to me. I'll give you my factoring worksheet to help you guys with your uh, factoring. So as I mentioned, guys, I do got to run today. I don't have a long stream. I apologize for that, but I only got three questions here. So hopefully we can kind of get this out of the way. Um, but again, I will be going live tomorrow. So if you guys do have some questions that you want to ask in trig or in anything else, uh, feel free just to make sure you guys are um, checking in with the subscribe notification, whatever. Then you guys will know when I go live and I'll, I'll try to uh, get my live set up early with at least a couple of hours advance. So therefore, if you do have some questions, you guys can definitely respond to them on there as well. How do you find the x with sine of 0 and constraint 0 lies on quadrant 2? Current of theta. I'm assuming that's theta, sine of theta, and constraint of theta lies on quadrant 2. Um, well, I think I'm going to need a little more information, Stephen. I, I know what you're doing, and we're coming up into that unit. Um, but if you can kind of maybe write the equation, like kind of how it's written as far as on here, then I can maybe answer your question here with enough time, um, depending on how long I get these. So if just... Yeah, sine of theta equals three fifths, so it's in quadrant two. So I'll I'll answer your question here right at the end. Let me cover these because these don't have restrictions, right? You've noticed so what we aren't where you're at yet. We're just a couple days behind. 
And so these don't have restrictions. So when we're talking about sine, cosine, tangent, that's why everything's positive, right? Um, so I'll get to your question here in just a second. Let me just wrap this up. If we want to find cosine of this angle theta, that means it's adjacent over hypotenuse, but we don't know hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and figure out what the hypotenuse is. So that's 36 plus 25, 51 equals c squared. So if I want to do cosine of theta, that's going to be 5 over my hypotenuse, which I said was square root of 51. Now I need to rationalize the denominator, which is going to be 5 square root of 51, which since I've done this so many times, I'm going to leave it as that. And I'm getting 61, not 51. Just, uh, yeah, I forgot that little loop here. Oops. This is what you get when you're trying to like rush through. So yeah, it's definitely 61 because two plus five is 50 and that's 61. So how about a five 61 over 61? There you go, answer B. Uh, the next one, sine of theta is five over seven, cosine of theta is two radical six over seven, find tangent. So remember, if we know sine, we know this is opposite and this is the hypotenuse. This is adjacent, and this is hypotenuse, based on cosine. Um, so therefore, tangent, remember, tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. So that is how we, so therefore, in this case, we're going to have, we already have opposite side, and then we have the adjacent. Now, in case you didn't know how I rationalized the denominator up here, just multiply by the radical on the top and the bottom. That's the same process I did over here with 61. And when doing that, you get five square root of six over two times six is going to be 12. Or square root of six times square root of six is six. Six times two is 12. And you can see my answer is C. Uh, last one, find the exact value of the following expression without using a calculator. So you can see this is 60 degrees. If I'm like short on this, trying to understand it, um, I remember that, okay, here's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. If that's 30, this is 60 degrees and degrees. I know short leg is X, hypotenuse is 2X, and then my long leg is X square root of three. I just kind of had that memorized. Um, so tangent of 60 degrees is going to be opposite over adjacent, so that's going to be tan of 60 degrees is x square root of 3 over x. So that's just going to equal the square root of 3, which is answer B. Okay? Um, and you, again, it could have been any special, any 30, 60, 90 triangle. The other one that we talked about in class was 1, 1 half, square root of 3 over 2. You could have used that one. You could do this one, you know, 10, 5, 5 square root of 3, doesn't matter which 30, 60, 90 triangle you use. You just got to make sure you understand how their sides are related. And when you take the tangent of that 60 degrees, you're going to get the same answer, square root of 3. Okay. Um, all right, Stephen, I'll go ahead and answer your question. So you're given an angle, or you're given one, sine of theta is equal to 3 fifths, but theta is in the second quadrant, right? So let's go ahead and draw that equation in the second quadrant. So if we're going to draw a triangle in the second quadrant, we want to make sure we're using our reference angles, okay? which is you know, one thing we just talked about today in my class. So we're going to want to draw the triangle like this. Um, you don't want to draw the triangle like this. Okay? That's what one of the mis big mistakes students will make. All right, we're using the reference angle with, we're making sure that our, our angle still has a vertex out there because the reference angle is, this, is going to give us the same value as our um, original angle. And I don't want to get too much into it, but if you just make sure that you write your triangles with your angle, uh, what we call a central angle, meaning the vertex at the origin. So therefore we know this is three and that's five. Now, based on this being a Pythagorean triple, we know this is four. But remember, since you are given a constraint of it's in the second quadrant, we had to. We are now taking into consideration direction. And 
three is positive. Hypotenuse is always positive. But if you look at, you're going four units to the left, so that, that, that's going to be a negative four. So I don't have time to go through the six trigonometric functions for you because that's what I did for the rest of this um, lesson for all of you guys. However, you would just now, once you've had that equation, you would now go ahead and evaluate the six trigonometric function. So hopefully that helped. Um, Dalaman says, good day. I am writing statistics 111 on Sunday. Do you have any links that can help me get past papers? I am so sorry. I have nothing for you on statistics. I, um, only have taught statistics very, uh, very, very like limited amount, very, very limited topics in statistics just for like algebra two curriculum. So I unfortunately am not a good resource of statistics material at all. So I do apologize. I'm glad you kind of joined on the stream. But yeah, as far as the statistics stuff, I, I hope I can maybe teach you in the next couple of years, um, you know, maybe next year or the year after just to kind of expand uh, a lot of the math topics that I cover on my channel. But at this point, it's just not something that I have a lot of content on. And Connor, my goal is this whole Americans are so thick. You take so long on easy questions. Well, I mean, I could do this very quick, Connor, and but I don't think that would make much of a educational sense as far as for people understanding that it doesn't, you know, that takes a little while. So I do try to find balance um, in my instruction like obviously I don't want my instruction to take too long um, but in the same respect I just don't want to like breeze through all the problems and so therefore people that are like conceptually trying to like understand the material they have enough time to like think through it so yeah you're right it is a balance um, you know I've been doing these problems enough that I could probably do this very quickly and show everybody the tricks and just do it really quick but then a lot of students would not pick up the material. Um, in the same respect, though, I, you know, sometimes I know, like, I showed rash lines of denominator a lot. And some of you might have already been like, I already know how to do this. You don't need to show the steps. And I get it. And I apologize for sometimes it takes a little longer, but I try to satisfy both students, the students that get it and the students that are struggling. So that's what you get. Holy. Um, so hopefully maybe that helped Connor and Stephen. Happy to help you out. All right, guys, I got to go. I will be doing a live stream, though, tomorrow. Um, so hopefully I can see you guys there. Um, on the next one. So cheers guys.